Drupal Geddon, one of Drupal's worst security flaws. Let's take a look at the security advisory. It was posted 2014 October 15th and its security risk was 25 out of 25. The max amount was highly critical and the target distribution was every single site that had Drupal 7.31 installed and the vulnerability was SQL injection. But how could such a dangerous vulnerability have existed in the code? Well, let's find out. So let's edit our user profile. Now all these fields you see here are sanitized, but are there any hidden inputs? Let's check out these password and confirm password fields right here. Now each of these fields contain values, but they are posted as multidimensional associative arrays. So the values are typed in here, and in the post value in PHP, the main array will be pass and pass, and this will be the key. So pass2 will contain the value of confirm password, and the pass1 key uh, in the pass array will contain the value for the normal password. So let's go look at the code. Whenever an, an array of values are passed, the expand arguments function is called. And that function is located in database dot inc. So all the arguments are passed in right here. And for each array filter of args that is an array, so any variable that is an array in this will be used in the for each loop right here and new keys will be created for these. So for each data as i and value. And this is sanitized, and so are these. But what about this i right here? This is where the exploit can happen, because this i is supposed to be a numerical value of some sort, but it's not. As, as you can see, we can try this out while debugging this. So let's go to our profile again, edit, and let's change our password. And let's click save. Now in PHP Storm, the debugger, debugger should pop up. Oh, whoops, we, I forgot to put my breakpoint right here. So let's go up and put it right here. And let's do that again. So once these are entered in, you can see under the post variable that this password is a multidimensional array, and these are the keys. So these are sanitized, but unfortunately these weren't. And these are the I values right here. This is the this is the whole data array because this this gets filtered out in over here. And this is the i variable and this is the value variable right here. And all this function is used to make the final query that gets passed in right here. So let's see how anyone can exploit this from the home page. Let's go back and let's resume this. Let's take out our breakpoint so the site can load. And let's go home and let's log out. Okay. Let's add our breakpoint again right here. And let's edit the HTML. Now you wouldn't think someone would do this, but they can, and you should never trust any, any user input, even the HTML. So let's edit this as HTML, and here, the name, this is what the key will be. So we have to make this an array, and we can do that by typing in open and closing brackets. And inside here is where the SQL injection takes place. So we can type in any numerical value and put a semicolon, and here we can write the SQL command. 
So let's update node revision and let's set the title to be equal to hacked exclamation points where where node ID will be equal to one and now you need to close the semicolon you need to close the statement with the semicolon and everything after that will also be evaluated so you need to use the minuscule comment which is space hyphen hyphen space and this will tell MySQL or SQL to ignore everything after that point. Now let's see what happens when we post this. So you can type in any username and password. And let's click login. Now this was caught by PHP Storm, and here we have the post array again. And over here you can see that name is now actually an array. And here is the key. And remember, this is the part that's not actually sanitized, so this will be updated. So let's go ahead and play through this. First, we need to get the name into the arguments, so let me keep resuming until we get there. All right, so now we finally have names here in the argument that was passed in up here. So now this will go through. So now we have this key and this value. So let's step through this and see what happens. And here's the query. So right now it's select all from users where name equals colon name and status equals one. So let's step through this. And let's keep looking at the query. Now you can see that this I right here, the increment value, which is supposed to be just numerical, is actually that whole string of SQL and none of it's been filtered out. And let's keep stepping through step through and here we go look at this query statement right here select all from users where name equals colon name zero and this is just a placeholder for something that will be replaced later and we end that and then here is our malicious code so update node revision set title equals hacked where node id click to see full value here's the full value where node id equals one and this this will just mess up the whole thing so we just comment it out so let's let this run and see what happens let me take out the breakpoint and let's resume now we get an error why this is because if you read the error right here it says invalid parameter number parameter was not defined basically it's saying that this name zero wasn't given so we actually need to give two inputs there for the whole SQL injection to work. So let's go back home and let's edit this again. Edit HTML. And this time we want to select all, copy it, and paste it so there are two forms. And this one will just be a plain zero array because that's what's going to be replaced in the first colon name underscore zero. But over here, we're going to have the malicious code. So let's update node revision. Where or let's set the title equal to hacked. where node ID equals one. Let's close that statement and then comment out everything else. And now let's try this out. So once you click back into the website, you s you'll see that two fields have popped up. Just type in your name or anything in both of them. And then type any password in, it doesn't have to be correct. And then let's click login. And now we get this one error, but the SQL has still been executed. Now you won't see it at first, but once you refresh, there we go. 
this site has officially been hacked. And that was not even really that much of a dangerous statement. All it did was change a title of one post. But once that there's a little loophole in the code, you can do many more dangerous things. Because of this SQL injection, you can see in this public service announcement here that a few hours later after the announcement of the SQL in injection, that there were many back doors implemented in all these Drupal sites that were running 7.3.1. And even if you updated to 7.3.2, those back doors were not removed. So it's not only that you can change just a title, but you can pretty much do anything you want since Drupal runs with MySQL or any SQL database. Now there are tools that you could have used to check whether your site had been hacked or not. And this was just called Drupal Geddon. It was a module for Drupal. So let's go ahead and install that. Let's use Drush download Drupal Geddon. Let's move this up. There we go, that finished installing. And now there's also another tool that we can download, which is Drush download site underscore audit. And you can check on the web page here how you can use these tools. Okay, so that one also finished installing. So we can basically run Drush Audit Security and Drush Drupal Get and Test. So let's do both of these right now to see if these tools actually tell you if they were hacked or not. So first let's do Drush Drupal Get and Test. And let's let this run. All right, so here it tells us that the site tested positive for known Drupal get an exploit checks and that this has security vulnerabilities, Drupal 7.1, and it's telling us to update to 7.3.4 or higher. So now let's test out the other Drush ASEC. Okay, so it popped up, but this tells us something completely different. It says security is 100% and no action is required. And this is why in this Drupal Geddon page, it says that neither Drupal Geddon nor any expert can guarantee whether a website has not been compromised. So even though that this says security is 100% and no action is required, it's not a guarantee and your sites still have been, may have been hacked. So this fix, if you don't want to upgrade to 7.32 or any version higher than that, there's actually a really easy fix that you can do. So let's go into this file and first let's change, let's go into our database, let's use Drupal 7 and let's update, let's change it back to the original title or something different. Let's change the node, update node, revision. Let's set the title to first article where RID equals one. All right, so there we go. Select all from node revision. And there we have our title is back to normal. So if we refresh this page, there we go, it's back to normal. So to fix this, I'll try to hack it again, except this time, all you need to do is for each right here, you need to add in the array values method. Now what this will do is basically take your associative array and I'll change that to a normal array with the keys being 0, 1, 2, 3. 
So if you want to check it out, you can check out the PHP docs right here. So let's Google this up. Go to the docs right here. And as you can see right here, if you make this array size XL color equals gold and run it through this array values function, it'll be returned as just XL and gold. So just the values and it'll take out whatever the key is. So since our exploit had to do with injecting SQL into the key of the array, that'll be taken out so it won't affect your website anymore. So this should block us out from exploiting the site. So let's save this and let's try to do this exploit once again. Okay, so we're back home. Let's just refresh. And let's also set a breakpoint right here so we can see what's happening now. Inspect element. Let's edit the HTML again. And now let's create our arrays. Now let's type in our SQL update node revision. And let's set the title equal to hacked again. Where the node ID will equal one. Now let's comment out whatever is afterwards. And now let's try to actually do this. So again, click here to fields should pop up. Type in usernames, type in passwords, and let's click login. Now PHP Storm is blinking. Here we go. So now let's get to the arguments by resuming until we get there, until we see user or names. Okay, so names popped up right here. So now you can see that this right here, the key is still there. But let's step through this and see what happens when we reach the next step. When we reach the next step, the new keys is formed. And now let's go next again. And as you can see right here, I, before it was this whole SQL statement, but right now it's only zero. So let's see the final query after we step through a couple more times. And there we go right here. Select all from users where name equals name zero and name one and status equals one. So this is not SQL injected into the query anymore. And this will protect this little bit of code or this little bit of adjustment will fix that SQL injection from your site being hacked. So if we take out this breakpoint and just let it run, let's go back and here we see that there's an error. And this protects your site from being hacked by the Drupal get in exploit. However, the best thing you can probably do is upgrade to 7.3.4 or 7.34 which is the latest version of Drupal instead of just doing that little fix yourself and there you go that's basically how Drupal get in happened about eight weeks ago on October 15th and how you can fix it and how it was exploited and that's pretty much it